Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you drum sound replacement in Reaper. Now I have a drum project in front of me. Let's see what it sounds like. Now I want to replace some of the drum sounds. Or in my case, I'll probably just enhance them. Meaning, I'm going to put drum samples on top of the real drums and mix them in. To give them more punch and make them sound more polished. So let's start with the kick. Let's solo it. So let's add a kick sample to replace it or enhance it. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the track. Select it, right click, and hit duplicate tracks. Then we're going to put this one up here, rename it, kick sample, and give it a different color so it stands out. Something like that. Now we want to split this track based on transients. Every time the kick hits, we want a separate item. So let's make this bigger. Select it. And let's open up Dynamic Split. We'll go to View, Dynamic Split. Now if you notice, there's a keystroke right here. So we can just hit D to open it up. And that opens up this dialog. Let's go through the options that we need. We want to make sure at transients is turned on, and these two are turned off. We just want to split the items based on the transients, which is what this does. Don't worry about this stuff over here. Go down here to action to perform. Make sure we choose split selected items. And then down over here, we're going to leave all these options off, especially these two down here, leading pad, trailing pad, and the fade pad. We're not going to need any of that. Then we go down over here to set transient sensitivity. We'll choose that. And here we can set our threshold for what a transient is and how it's going to be split. And we can adjust it right from here. If we bring it down here, it's very sensitive. So all these dotted lines are going to be where the split takes place. If we set it too far this way, nothing is split. So we want to get it just right so that every kick hit is split. Now there's an option over here I like to choose. Display threshold in media items while this window is open. This creates these two lines right here. So when we adjust our threshold, we can see what's going to be chosen. So if we bring it up, the lines get higher, and they're not low enough to grab these transients. But if we set it lower, it gets low enough to grab them. So we just want to bring it low enough to grab the kick hits. And we should probably scroll through to make sure they're all chosen. Looks pretty good. So now we can close this. The dotted lines are still there. And go down here and choose split. And that splits them by their transients, as you can see. So now we want to replace each one of these items with a drum sample, in this case, a kick sample. So just double click the track to select them all, go to View, and open Media Explorer. And from down here, we can choose our kick samples. I'll go into this one, and here are my options. Let's choose this one, Kick P. So all I have to do, with these all selected, is right click it, and choose Use as Media Source for Selected Items. And if we choose that, it all gets replaced with that sample. Let's listen. Now it's important to note that if the sample length is too short, this might happen. Let's trim this out. See right over here? This is a loop point. So my sample that I dragged in was this long. But if you drag in a very short one, it might loop, as you can see right here. You don't want that to happen. So it's always a good idea to select them all, right click, 
and turn off looping. This way, if the item is too long, right here, it's not going to play another kick. So it's a good idea to turn that off. So now we have a kick sample every time the drummer played the kick drum down over here. And now we should zoom in to make sure it lines up, especially with kick drums. See how the waveform goes up and then down? This one goes up and down as well. So they do match up. If they didn't, they would look like this. Let's invert the phase. This one goes down and this one goes up. That's going to sound weird. And it's going to reduce the low end when the kicks combine. So if your waveform looks like this, just go in here and select this. But this looks pretty good. So the next thing we want to do is make sure the samples line up. So if we zoom out, we can see that this sample looks pretty good. We could double click the track and shift it if we have to. We just want to make sure it lines up pretty close to the real kick. And then we have to do that with each sample just to make sure they all line up. So I'm going to use a keystroke. On PC, it's Control and the right bracket. On Mac, it's Command and the right bracket. Just hit that, and it goes to the next sample right here. And we can see that looks good as well. If it didn't, we could double click this, unselect the first one, and then move this over. And just go through the whole song doing the same thing. That looks good. This looks pretty good. So now we can zoom out and listen to it back as the drum sample is being combined with the live kick. Before, it's a bit weaker sounding. It doesn't have as much punch, but if we turn this back on and mix it in, it sounds a bit more punchy than without the sample. But let's say, after we've gone through the work and lined up the sample, we want to use a different one. That's even easier to do because we've already done the work. I'll show you. Just double click this, open the Meteor Explorer, and just choose a different sample. Let's choose this one. Kick D, right click it, use as media source for selected items, and it swaps it out. Now, as long as the phase or the polarity still lines up, and it does, all that shifting that we did earlier will keep it perfect. So let's hear this one. That's another good option. But if you're not sure, which one you want to choose, there's an even better way to do this. Let's go back to the original one right here. Choose it again. Goes back to the first one. Now, if you want to switch quickly between different kicks, just select it. Go to the next one we want to try. Right click it and choose this option here. Insert as take in selected items. Choose that. And now it creates a new take with kick D. See what it says take two of two? So we could switch samples just by hitting the T key. Hit T. We're back to this one. Hit it again. We go back to kick D. Let's add one more. Notice this one is stereo, but it doesn't matter. It's still going to work. Insert is take in selected items. And now we have this one to choose from as well. And we can switch them on the fly. And it's also great for layering. Let's say you want to use more than one. Let's say we're happy with the first sample. We can just right click it and crop it to the active take. 
that gets rid of the other takes. And now we can duplicate this track right here and take the second one and replace that one. This one is kick P. Let's make this one kick D. Go here, use this media source for selected items. And now we have two samples that are layered. So again, we should zoom in, make sure the phase or polarity lines up, and they do. And now we can play it back with two samples on top of the live kick. So it's a great way of layering. Now this method works really well for kick drums, because most times, especially in rock music, kicks aren't very dynamic. So one sample will usually work. But for snares, it's a bit more delicate, as there's a lot more dynamics in a snare drum. So let's delete this, and let me show you the process for doing with the snare drum. Let's solo the snare. So we'll start off doing the same thing. We'll duplicate it, put it up here, rename it, give it a different color, just so it stands out, make it a bit bigger. Let's split it, hitting D, go to sensitivity, and make sure we get all these hits. Right here is a snare fill. So we wanna get all those hits. So bring this down, so it gets all of them. Then we can split it, I'm gonna get rid of this piece right here because it's not a snare hit. Then we can select them all, go to the Media Explorer, and choose a snare sample. Right here, we have a rock snare. Let's try that one. Again, we'll right click it, use this media source for selected items, it switches it out. We'll zoom in to check the polarity. Looks pretty good. We'll shift it a little bit. And let's hear it with the track. It's a bit too loud. Now notice right here on the fill, the fill is a lot more dynamic than the samples. It creates a machine gun effect where the sample is way too loud and the sample sounds the same on each hit. It sounds a bit fake. So let me show you how to create some dynamics to our sample. Let's make this bigger. And we'll start off by automating the volume. We'll create an envelope right here. And I'm gonna use volume pre-effects. The reason for this is it'll adjust the volume before it hits any effects, like compressors or EQ that are on the track. Plus, it leaves this envelope separate for automating our snare later. So I'm going to choose this one instead. And I'm going to put it right in the lane. So we can adjust it right here. I'm going to hold down shift, create some envelope points, put another one over here, and bring this down so the level is a lot lower. Move this over a bit. So let's hear that now. It's a bit more natural. Let's hear it with the drums. That's a lot better, but there's still one problem. Let's hear it in solo. Each drum still sounds the same, even though the volume is being adjusted. So to make it sound more random or more natural, let's adjust the pitch. So we'll grab these notes that are in the fill. We'll right click, go to take, and choose take pitch envelope. And that creates a pitch envelope for each one of these items. So now we can change the pitch on each one of them separately. Let's make this a bit higher, this a bit lower, this a bit higher, but different than this. The same on this side, and bring this one up a bit as well. So now each one of these should be different. Sounds a lot more natural. Before, sounds like a machine gun fill. After, That sounds a lot better. Let's hear it in the track. 
That sounds a lot more natural to me. And what's good about this is once the snare is lined up and you got the pitch and the volume exactly how you want it, we can either layer it with another sample or replace the sample and keep everything else intact. Check it out. We'll select it all by double clicking the track, go to the Media Explorer, and let's change the sound to this one instead. We'll right click it, use as media source for selected items, and it swaps it out. But it keeps the volume change and the pitch change. Here in solo. So all that work we did isn't wasted. So we could swap the sound out at any point and keep everything else intact. So anyway, that's drum sound replacement in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.